four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Debrief, Apollo 8. Roger. We're going to see if we can find the stars here before we uh, do the P-52. A machine may be said to be born when it first performs a useful function. This, then, is the birth of a machine and the beginning of an achievement. The dream of man, the long, impossible dream to reach out to the moon, is coming true. These men will lead the way. Colonel Frank Borman, Navy Captain Jim Lovell, Lieutenant Colonel Bill Anders. The successful conclusion, the happy ending, is history. But gaps remain. Importantly, part of the task of filling those gaps belongs to each individual a self-debriefing to evaluate the larger significance of the event which might have gone unnoticed in the excitement. The speed of the spacecraft, outward bound, brings us face to face with another acceleration, a new fact of life. And now the velocity of history is carrying us into a new phase in the human adventure. No one knows where this new phase will end, in what triumph or tragedy. But it is clear that the flight of Apollo 8 begins a new epoch in the history of man. Historian Arthur Schlesinger, Jr. This is Mission Control. It stands as the first rank of the unnumbered and innumerable Apollo team. Flight controllers man the consoles. They watch a continuing readout of every system in the capsule, three shifts around the clock. All flight controllers speak to the astronauts through one voice, the capsule communicator of each shift. He is an astronaut himself, best suited to sense the needs, the stresses, the preoccupations, the environment of the men so far away. The mission was conducted in the plain sight of the entire world, literally. Happy birthday, mother. Back in 1961, when Apollo goals were first set, President Kennedy said, Whatever mankind must undertake, all men must freely share. Apollo 8 remained true to that pledge. On television, it gave us a new look at the moon and a new look at ourselves. Okay, uh, Houston. The moon is essentially gray. No color. The moon is a uh, different thing to each one of us. I know my own impression is that it's a, a vast, lonely, forbidding type existence or expanse of nothing. It looks rather like clouds and clouds of pumice stone. And it certainly would not appear to be a very inviting place to, to live or work. Friday, December the 27th. Re-entry, splashdown, acquisition, recovery. The last 15 minutes of the flight began at a speed of almost 25,000 miles an hour. Then, only five miles from the appointed rendezvous in the Pacific, it ended speed zero. If a machine may be said to be born when it performs a useful function, perhaps it is said to die when that function is fulfilled. It has been estimated that at some time or another during the flight of Apollo 8, over one billion people all over the face of the globe were tuned into the spacecraft by television or radio. The experience was most widely shared. 